This Week in Michigan Football History with Professor Greg Dooley. Good evening to all the Michigan faithful from the coast of Lake Michigan to the coast of Lake Erie. Before we face off with the Spartans in this in-state battle for bragging rights, let's take a quick history lesson, shall we? First off, you should know that it was on this day in 1978 that old Bob Eufer blasted his scoring horn many times in the 42 to nothing route of the Wisconsin Badgers on October 21st, 1978. That was good for all-time victory number 600 and set the course for another Big Ten title for Bo and a trip to Pasadena. On this day in 1939, old 98 Tom Harmon did the things that future Heisman winner will do and his Wolverines absolutely destroyed the University of Chicago 85 to nothing. The beatdown was so complete, it was the final nail in the coffin for the Chicago football program. Just weeks later, the Maroons announced they were pulling out of the Big Ten. Their exit eventually made way for our farming friends from East Lansing to join the conference a decade later and make it an even 10 again. We close tonight's edition all the way back into the 1920s, a decade that saw many Wolverine all-time greats take the gridiron, including Michigan men like Harry Kipke, who helped Yost earn another national title in 1923, and legends Benny Eusterbahn and Benny Friedman. Another legend of that era is a gent named Paul Goebel. Goebel was born in 1901, and at six foot five, he was a giant for his day. While you won't hear him mention with the greats like Anthony Carter, Braylon Edwards, Derek Alexander, and Roman Wilson, he was the first Michigan end to don the coveted number one jersey. So exactly 101 years ago on this day in Michigan football history in Columbus, Ohio, it was supposed to be a special day for the Buckeyes as they officially dedicated their newly minted Ohio Stadium. Our man Goble was injured, but he gave it a go anyway and hobbled into the horseshoe on one leg, immobilized with a steel brace that required oiling to prevent friction burn. With a field goal, a block kick, and a fumble recovery, he led the Wolverines to a 19-0 victory, though he collapsed in the third quarter and had to leave the game. He, along with Harry Kipke, dominated the Buckeyes on that day and spoiled their special dedication. So that's how you take down a rival, and let's do it again today. So go Blue, beat the Spartans, keep Paul home, and for more, check out WTKA.com and MVictors.com. For the Key Bank Countdown to Kickoff, this is the Professor Greg Dooley.